Excuse me. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, a little better. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Some of you came back. Uh, well, we have a lot to begin with. You know, we have a lot. I don't know how much we're going to get through, uh, but we have a lot. Um, so really, this is it. You guys still want to be lawyers? Yeah, I'm sorry? Yes. Yeah, uh, have I mentioned that uh, there are no tricks and there are no shortcuts? Do I make? Yeah, yeah you got to watch this. I mean, I don't want it. If you don't want it, I don't want it. You know I'm saying? If you don't really want this, I, 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 don't, I don't want you here. I don't mean that you know, like in a nasty way or anything. Um, but it should be your life. And it's not complicated. It's just this stuff. And it's, you just try to be a jerk less often. Could you do that? I mean, I'm trying. <laughs> you know, but that's what it is. It's, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll reason instead of being a jerk. That's what it is. It's just nothing fancy about this. So, <clears throat> so I'm gonna do some overview, oversight in the beginning, right? And then we'll 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 take out. Uh, <clears throat> we'll work on one exam. I have extra copies, so if you don't have, you don't have to worry about it. Um, uh, it and <clears throat> the goal is first to understand this because it really is all three sections respond to this. But more importantly, this is how lawyers read. There are no exceptions. Uh, and so it's how you're going to have to learn how to reason. And it's just no big deal. <clears throat> and again, this for those coming late, this is not my Michael Jackson imitation. But this is, okay, a little arthritis there. I'm not, I'm not you know, right. Um, <clears throat> so from now on, whether you're here with me or you're here with Jim or you're here with Keith, everything is going to be on IRAC. Everything. Uh, and so IRAC is our version of the scientific method, right? This is all we do. This is, this is, there is nothing else, right? And it requires you be clinical. And I think that's a really big stumbling block. Uh, I don't know that the country's any more polarized than it's been at, at other times in the past. Um, uh, but it's clearly not kumbaya. When the Speaker of the House rips up a speech, uh, we're not in a good place. We're just not in a good place. Whoever's responsible, we're not in a good place. Um, so this is the opposite of that. You with me? You can't, you can't rip up the speech and do this, right, because you're too angry. Uh, you can't be calling the other party names and do this because you're just too angry. So it's fine to be angry. I'm not, that's wonderful. Be angry. Right? It's your life, not mine. But this is how you're going to be paid to reason. Your client is going to be angry. You with me? Your client is going to be hurt. Your client is going to be the person who's in, in an emotional state that you're not in. And if you go there, you're going to mess up. Mm -hmm. right, that's all there is. It's just, it's nothing personal. It's, you're here to give people advice. You're not here to tell people what they want to hear. You're here to give, and I'm certainly not here to tell you what you want to hear. Um, and, and it's just, you start with an issue, and again, this will be all three sections of the test. You're going to start with an issue. You have to apply the issue first, you have to focus. The issues in, in logical reasoning, these are the major issues. So that's what we're gonna not exclusively focus on today, but 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 this is if you look in uh if just the logical reasoning alone, of the fifty questions you have, there are about fourteen issues. So it's really the issues you're focusing on. Questions, well, okay. Uh, the questions are presenting issues. If you don't understand the issue, you toast. Doesn't matter how bright you are. If you don't understand the issue, you're toast. So you have to learn what the issues require you to do. And uh, and these are the of, of the 50 questions. That's figure uh, eight, 16, uh, maybe 26. 
thirty. <coughs> Thirty-four, uh, almost forty of the fifty questions are right here, and and they're just clothed in issues. So I don't care about questions; I care about what's the issue presented. And you're heavily tested on this. I, I don't think I've mentioned today, so let me get let me get you. Get, so you guys, you, you know, you're going to die, right? <laughs> yes. You with me? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, so you're not here to fill up space. You know, this is not a, a wake. We're not just waiting for the moment to come. Um, <coughs> you want to love what you do, and you want to do it passionately. And if you're not going to do that, you're just in the wrong place. So. We're going to introduce these issues. Um, and this process. Okay. So, in logical reasoning, the issue is the question presented, about 14 issues. In logical reasoning, the rule, which is the law, is the argument. Okay. Have you ever read something you disagree with? Talk to me. Yes. Have you ever read something that infuriates you? Yes. And do you think that my, if I gave you a court decision, a Supreme Court decision, and I told you it was written by Justice Thomas, might you already have a view of what you're about to read before you read it? Talk to me. Yeah. Just, to, just be human for a second, right? Probably conservative. I'm sorry? Well, Probably conservative. Well, right. Point. My point is, whatever that view is, right? That's, that's fine. You, by all means, hang on to whatever views you have or change them and, and, and allow them to evolve. But do you get how your view may influence how you read? Yes. yes. Right? Now, if you were reading a decision by Justice Ginsburg, might you also have a view? Yes. Talk to me. Mm -hmm. Sure. Might, might, you know, so before you ever start reading, you have an impression, yes? One might be favorable, one might not be favorable, and I don't care. But shouldn't it be the reasoning that you're presented with that you either find persuasive or not? Talk to me. Yeah. So, you, as lawyers, you're going to read things as though you never know who the author was. Because it's not relevant. Are you with me? Yeah. It's not relevant. The only thing relevant in this world is the reasoning. And the reasoning, have you ever bumped into reasoning that was unexpectedly robust from somebody you thought was really dumb? Yes. <laughs> We're talking, right? And it works in reverse, right? Yeah. Have you ever thought somebody walked on water and then you read something they wrote or you heard something they said and you're saying to yourself, huh? Talk to me. Okay. So what's the big deal? This is all you. This is all you have to do, right? I mean, God's got to let it happen. <clears throat> but this, this part of our world, from here, all the way down to here, constitutes an argument's reasoning. An argument only has two components, and you're going to get paid to argue. Now, argue doesn't mean fight. I mean, it can, I suppose, you know, but when, I, when we say argument, we're not saying to argue. It depends what argue means. Right. We're saying to reason. And it really is so basic, right? If you do this, if you're aware of this process, right, and you do it well, and you're not concerned about anything else, right? Just what's in here, you'll be a lawyer. It does strike me that a, 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 a sizable percent of people simply cannot do this. Of which I think, you know, it, people just, have you noticed people are different? Who's that? Oh, yeah. Well, like I'm looking at my family, right? Like, you know, I'm, no, no, I'm, 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 
And I don't know, there's a lot, I mean, a lot, a lot's not really telling you anything, but there were five kids, five of us who survived. So there were five of us, then there were, I don't know, 16 grandchildren, and then there were 20 some odd, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, we're all over the place now, like locusts. But I bring it up because this is not what I grew up with. It's, it's a million miles from what I grew up with. What I grew up with was, uh, you, just went, you just got right here. And you know, you just picked whatever you picked. And, but it's, it's, for many of us, it's not part of our DNA to acquire evidence without passing judgment. Just acquire evidence. I, I don't care. It, <clears throat> If you already have the answer before we begin the journey, uh, what good am I to you? Right? So it's really just can you go where the evidence takes you? Now, it's going to change when you come out and you're practicing. Um, you know, because when you come out and you're practicing, you're, you're hired to take a position, right? So then, like in law school, it's kind of neat because you just kind of get to try to figure out how to reason well. And when you come into practice, well, you still, you're, that's the whole point is to reason well, but then you're reasoning well for a party, right? So you're, this is not a search. Anybody in here think law is a search for the truth? <laughs> okay, that's, that's a relief, okay? We're not interested in the truth. I don't even know what the truth is, right? So I'm certainly not seeking that which I will never find. Uh, we are seeking to persuade on behalf of our clients, right? But this is how we do it. So the only thing that changes is when it comes to practice, you're representing someone. So then you are cherry picking evidence. Now that said, you're cherry picking evidence with a full understanding that the other side is doing the very same thing. And it's a contest, basically, it's just a contest. Right? Um, but if you allow your view Think about things you really feel viscerally about. Because those are the areas I suspect you're at greatest risk. Would it be fair to say many of us have passionate views on immigration? Talk to me. Yes. But I, I'm not saying you necessarily, but would it be fair to say many of us in this country have strongly held views on immigration? Yes. yes. And further, many of us in this country have very strongly held views as to President Trump. Yeah. Yeah. That's just being human. Hello. They haven't done anything wrong yet. Um, would we all agree that there, there are regulations, legislation, statutes, there are rules, rules that govern that govern the executive the executive's power to impact immigration policy. Talk to me. Yes. Yes. And is it fair to say those rules are there? Meaning they don't, they, they weren't born from this administration. They're, they're there. Yeah? yeah? Okay. And they say something. Yes? yes. Talk to me. Yes. Could the something they say be something you desperately don't want to read? Yes. 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 Could the something they say be something you're thrilled to read? Yes. yes. Does that change what is written? No. That's just business. You with me? Because if you want to come in and you want to prevail on <coughs> an issue like does the administration have the authority to transfer funds to the military for the purposes of putting up a border wall, you get how you feel about that has nothing to do with whatever legislation is in place, whatever administrative <coughs> laws are there, whatever executive you get it's got nothing to do with how you feel talk to me yes yeah. can you get over that yeah. yeah can you read the legislation can you read the regulations and say to your client we're fucked <laughs> talk to me. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. okay well then you can be a lawyer right but if you can't do that if you can't do that <clears throat> you can't be a lawyer or you eventually you just do you guys get it it's like, I don't know, you know, like I'm, I'm inferring that a surgeon just kind of goes through with what one does in surgery and, and it, you know, is, is not having empathy for whoever's on the table. I mean, you got to do what you got to do, get in, get out, make it happen. 
So, this is the kit. Nobody needs Aristotle. There's no formal logic on this test. Whether you have a 3.8 GPA or a 2.8 GPA doesn't make a whole lot of difference for this test. Um, it's can you make this change? Can you, you know, if you want to be a visionary, okay, that's fine. I'm gay. But, but your vision cannot alter what the writer wrote. You with me? This is about what did the writer wrote. Had, isn't it possible that the writer wrote something you, again, that you just disagree with? Yeah, yeah. Does that change what the writer wrote? No. no. And, when, and what the writer writes, until it gets changed by some other body, is the what? Yeah. Yeah. And this is the whole bloody test. So, it's really cool because you drive people crazy. You'll be driving them crazy in like two to three weeks. Just because we don't, under, we don't use the language that we have carefully. And there's no reason for you guys to use it carefully. You're not lawyers. But in my world, it's imperative that we use it carefully. You know, so. You see, you got to put it again. I don't mean, this is, I, I, I keep saying it. Because you know, to me, it is easy. Because it's natural for me to reason this way, notwithstanding I didn't grow up with it. You with me? So it's not like something you have to be exposed to. Because, Lord, nobody in my family reasons this way. Okay. There's one attorney in my extended family that's made it. You know, that doesn't make me better. It's, it, and a million has got nothing to do with that, right? It just means this is a natural way for me to proceed. So I'm doing the right thing. I, I'm using what gifts God gave me in an appropriate way, I believe. Um, so we're all going to be able to do this. So you're passionate about the environment and you read a regulation that, that you don't like. You get the regulation still holds. Talk to me. Yes. You pass it about immigration and you're reading an executive order and you want the guy dead. Right? That's how you feel. You want the son of a bitch dead. Does that change the executive order? No. Oh, go And then it's a question of whether or not the order is in administrative law, right? Does it have authority? Does it, you know, is it justified by the new governing law? That's it. That's it. That's all they're testing you on. So, <clears throat> so when you're doing this, and you can, you know, I mean, in, 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 this is this is what we all do. We don't all write it out, right? But if you're going to reason the way a lawyer is paid to reason, you're very much aware of this category of things. And this category of things. This category of things and this category of things. You get that no matter how you perceive it in life, there are facts that you have relied on which are established. Now again, the word established, we're all about language. So in law, it's a fiction. Because all established facts means in law are facts that are stipulated to by the parties. Right? So defense counsel and I have agreed that the, uh, maybe defense counsel doesn't want the cocaine to come into uh, the jury's presence because the counsel is concerned that the presence of the cocaine might prejudice the jury. Right. Um, so counsel might stipulate, she might come to me and say, Peter, it's coke, we, we know it's coke, right? Let, let's make it, you know, we, we're, we're not arguing that's not coke, we're arguing that my guy didn't sell it. Right? We're not arguing it's not coke. Right? So that the issue is not, is it coke? Let me talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when we say an established fact, we're saying the parties stipulate to it. We can both be wrong. Could it could it, could it be the case we've we've stipulated the coke and it wasn't coke? Yeah. Yeah, you bet. I mean, it's not, not the most likely outcome, but yeah. Right. So on this test. They have to deal with that. They have to deal with, um, would we stipulate and agree that the day immediately following Tuesday on our calendar in this country is Wednesday? Yes. Right? Would we all stipulate and agree? Yeah. But have you ever met that person who wants to argue with you? Yeah. Right? No. Life could be an illusion. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Then, you know, I don't know who I've had this conversation with, if it is, but okay. Um, uh, so you get that, and that's the person somebody's going to say, you should be a lawyer. And I, I'm saying you should be institutionalized. <laughs> um, that's not what law is. You would? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So, on this test, Everything that is to the left of a period. You think you're going to see periods on this test? Little dots. You know those little dots yeah. that we call them periods? Yeah. And these little puffies, we call them uh, what, commas? Oh. And sometimes you get this, right? And that's it. You have you bet your colon. Right? Well, it's not your colon, right? I mean, your colon's are somewhere else. But, um, <laughs> well, you got to be careful with language. Um, so, when you see a period, whatever was to the left of it, on the outset, is an established fact. You with me? Yes. Yeah. So if that says, global warming is a fiction, what is now a fact? Talk to me, say it out loud, so it hurts. Yeah, you bet. Uh, if, if that says, we should have a 40-foot wall across the whole world, all across Texas. What should we have? <laughs> a 40-foot wall across. Just get, uh, just, just get this, right? You can never understand the other side until you have access to the other side's reasoning, mm -hmm. right? If you're going to marginalize the <coughs> other side, really the only person you marginalize <coughs> is yourself. So, you know, it's like, come on, stop. If, if your argument is persuasive, what are you afraid of? What guys are you afraid of? If your argument is persuasive, you're going to marginalize whoever's on the other side. I, oh, please tell me more. Gosh, I'm slow. Tell me more. That's how this proceeds. Sounds just like our political system, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here, on the test, right, if the first sentence is, Every planet you'll never see is purple, but it's not the case. Right. So the word we use, word I would use for this, is you're changing the way. You, have I mentioned you need to change the way you read? And this, all of this is paying attention to detail. You know, nobody cares if you know what the word epistemological means. I don't. I don't care. I can't spell it. I never use it. And if I did use it, jurors would not clue what I was talking about. Right. Hello. Right. So it's not an academic. Um, it is very much, as, as we said last week, with this cast, i got to try to spell this now, psycho, that, that's P-S, right, C-H-O, P-S, C-H, that's psycho. Mm -hmm. right. Y-Y. Listen to Y. P-S-Y. P-S-Y. <laughs> That's what this test is. It's a psychometric situational test. And all that means is you're presented with, <coughs> if you're testing it on a concepts, that's where all this begins with. And again, I'll, I'll link this to law. It's so, uh, to me, it's so important that you get it. As your LSAT score goes up, it's very, very likely your law school class rank goes up. It's very, very likely that your, the chances you'll test bar exam go up, although that correlation is not as strong, but it's very much there. Um, so if you, sit, if you get this, like one, my score goes up and the most uh, down-to-earth benefit is you'll get into law school, right? Then the second most down-to-earth benefit is you'll get money. So if you just never reach any other issue, you'd be fine on those grounds. But it's so much more than that. Again, I think as we, we touched on last week, the LSAT has a 
correlation value that's 50% greater, roughly, that's not fair, 40% greater, than the correlation value of your undergraduate GPA. So meaning it's, uh, it's predictive. It's really, really predictive. Um, that doesn't mean you're destined, you know, there's lots of folks who end up getting 149 and then end up on the law review. So it's not a question of being determinative, it's not. But it's really good. That's a general trend. So, so what they're going to do is they're going to give you this information. And that leads to, what, so that just leads to acceptance, right? All you got to do is accept. Just, just don't fight. Right? And that's, that's, I refer to that as reading textually. So one of the things you're going to do is now to read textually. Right? Now you can discard that when you sit on the Supreme Court <coughs> and you want to read an interpretive matter. God bless you. <coughs> Have fun. Right? But if you want to go to law school, you're not going to be interpretive, you're going to be textual. And all that means is they're testing you. Did you read what the writer wrote? And are you able to infer from what the writer wrote where the writer was going next? Do you get that has nothing to do with you and what you think? Okay. Um, I assure you, your first year of law school, some poor bastard will do this in class and say, I think. <coughs> and then whoever's at the front of the room will stare at the poor bastard and say, Mr. Jones, nobody cares what you think. Right. It's not, but you get, this is not, if you want to be, again, as I said last week, if you want to be a political scientist, get a PhD. If you want to protest, grab a sign and get the hell out. Right? I mean, and that's all fine. But that's not going to make you a lawyer. Lawyer, you'll preserve the rights of folks who want to pick up the sign and go out. You can even pick up the sign on your own if that's what you want to do. So. so think about this as you read now, right? All you're reading for is an understanding of what the writer wrote. Now again, are you, don't you think in, you're going to read Supreme Court decisions when you're in law school that you, you're going to disagree with? How about if I give you the Dred Scott decision to read? Would it be fair to say you're unlikely to agree with the outcome in Dred Scott, yes. which, which, which found that slavery was constitutional? Okay. Could it have been the case that slavery, according to the law of the time, was in fact constitutional? Yes. Yes. Oh, go figure. Son of a bitch. So then, laws can be antithetical to things that we cherish, right? But you first have to understand the law, and then change it. So, so here, all you're doing, right, is just read with the right or wrote. Lose yourself and say, what would this person have said next, okay? And that's what this is. I'm going to create, if I'm working for them, I'm going to start here, this is what you're tested on principles, these things. But then I have to create examples. So it's straight out of law school. <coughs> in law school, doesn't matter which one. You come into torts, and somebody up here in torts, right, is going to write <coughs> duty of care, risk of harm, foreseeability. Right? Do you get that when I say duty of care, it's an abstract term? I mean, wouldn't we have to discuss what duty of care is? Talk to me, yes. right? Yes. And when we say risk of harm, wouldn't we have to discuss, well, what does it mean? What does risk of harm mean, right? Mm -hmm. So it's abstract. Then you're going to leave that class, and you're going to go into contracts. And in contracts, they're going to write up here offer, consideration, acceptance, and defenses. Oh. 
Doesn't that mean you actually conceptually have to understand what constitutes an offer? Mm -hmm. Is anything an offer? If I say to you, you can have my car, go, go take my car. Is that an offer? Yes. And then you have to have the conversation, right? Um, so what I'm thinking is in law school, no matter what class you're in, you're starting with whoever's up here, right, is going with, all right, I got to get you guys to understand what an offer is if I'm in contracts, right? But to do that, I'm going to use situations. Now, situations in law school are cases which were actually things that happened in real life, right? Which sometimes will be found by a court to constitute an offer, and on other occasions will not be found by the court to constitute an offer. So you get what you're learning by reading example after example after example. Talk to me, because that's how it proceeds. And it doesn't matter what class you're in. When, when you're in uh, torts, in terms of what is your duty of care? Okay, well, that's going to be presented to you by a whole bunch of different cases with a whole bunch of different situations where the court found, yes, the plaintiff did have a duty of care and thus was responsible, right? Or the plaintiff did not have a duty of care and was not responsible. So do you get, you're gonna learn by example and walk your way up to the abstraction so that eventually you understand what duty of care is. You could be the court, you with me? Mm -hmm. You're gonna understand what an offer is. You could be the court. It, you don't have the Aristotle to do this. So, if I wanted to create a test to see if you're gonna do well in law school, doesn't like your common sense say that would be a good way to create a test? Like, give you a bunch of examples, but the examples are tethered to some larger principles. So really what I'm testing you on is understanding the principles, right? But it's not a philosophy test. So I, you know, I, I'm not doing it that way. I'm gonna see, first, so, so I'm creating this test and I'm thinking, well, what do you, like when you're in torts, Do you think you're going to need to know the difference between a coincidence, a correlation, and causation? Yeah. Yeah. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. And then when you say it that way, it doesn't sound like it's law school. Because it is. Well, this is the law school admission <coughs> test. They just, it's really remarkable what they've done. So, but do you think in your regular life, you or people you know, might not have the interest to sit down and say, no, 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 what is the difference between coincidence, correlation, and causation? Do you think there are people in your life who either are not able to do that or are not motivated to do that, which I think is more, yeah. talk to me. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and you know what they're gonna be five years down the road? Something else. Hmm? Not Clients. <clears throat> All right, so you want to encourage them to keep doing that. Stay lazy. <laughs> right? That's, I'm telling you, it's all there is. It's, 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 this is not. If you're not going to work, don't do this. Right? If you are going to work, your self esteem is going to go through the roof. And, and, and again, I can tell you, as someone who's coming from very low self-esteem and you know it's not about again it's not individual stories i'm just saying law just embraces but you know you gotta you gotta get out of your fur line to ride take responsibility there are no victims here uh 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 no way nope all right so <clears throat> so i'm going to test you on this stuff right just like it's offer consideration. And here are the main issues. So what, what, a flawed argument. Say so one you want to say, well how do I recognize it? You, you got to be really clinical. Right? Well, the first part of this is issue recognition. In other words, if you misidentify the issue, the whole process is corrupted. You with me? Mm -hmm. you, you can have a PhD in, in Biology and it's not gonna make any difference because if you miss the issue, you're done. Right. 
Okay. So, one, you have to say, well, what is, when they say an argument is flawed, well, we need to say, well, what does the word argument mean? That means this. It means it's going to be reasoning, and it's going to be a conclusion. Just, you, you can't use the word argument without giving both. So every time you see the word argument, you know somewhere in that paper, right, there's, a, there's somebody's conclusion. Now the conclusion is the thing being explained. Just stop, just slow down, just like, you can do this, but you gotta go slow. Think again, without, uh, if, if you recommend that someone yeah, say you say, I think you should buy a Lexus. Okay. What what would a typical response be? If somebody just came up to you and said, <clears throat> and you're a lawyer now, right? I want you to buy a Lexus. Doesn't it sound like that's that person's conclusion? Yes. And then are you now obligated to inquire? Right. And that word why is, is you're screaming for this. There is, there's no exception. The, every time you have used the word why, you have requested of the other side that they provide you with their reasoning. And you get how your guard goes down. Let's say you like the person's conclusion. Makes you feel warm and fuzzy, right? It's just, it's just yay. I really like that. You think, you know, but, you know, but you get, when you feel warm and fuzzy, your guard is down, right? And you may be agreeing with the proposition, which is not well supported. Um, so, it really is just, what did you give me? All right. So, a flawed argument means that the writer has to embed a flaw. You say, well, what's that? It's a fatal defect. Okay, it's fatal. You're not weakening. It's not weakening an argument. You can weaken a valid argument. But a flawed argument means the writer has placed the virus in it. And what they're requiring you to do is name the virus. It's really that simple. And they only have so many viruses they can go to. Right. So on your test, this becomes, if you do the work, it will become a recognition test. Because while they, they have a wide array of areas they can test you on, there are specific uh, types of flaws that you will be tested on. And uh, they say, okay, so if you go along this pattern, you say, okay, I'm going to accept everything they say. Do you understand that kind of definition? Definition of inferred. You infer. You infer an inferred fact is a fact. Well, you're you're asserting it to be a fact. You may be wrong, but you're asserting it to be a fact. Which is not here. It's not. It's not here. It's not, it's just not. Not here. You with me? Not. But it follows from what's here. You with me? There is nothing more essential in my judgment. There is nothing more. There is no skill more essential to law than to infer prudently, to be able to defend every inference you draw, and to understand every time you take this leap, you can be wrong. You with me? Yes. You may be. You may feel as smug as can be, but every time you infer, you have to assume that the inference you've drawn is not invalid. And that is the, uh, uh, again, there are people who can't do this, right? So, one thing I mentioned last year, I, you know, I can bring my brother Edward in here, right? And we'll, we'll agree on whatever the established facts are for the New York Mets and how they played last season. But whatever those facts are, Edward will, Ed will, will infer that they'll win the World Series. Because he's inferred that every year since 1962. Right? Uh, okay. In 1962, the Mets were, I think, 40 and 122. You know, not, not a good pick for the next year, but I would pick them. So, and again, you see, your heart can take you where you're not supposed to go here. Because you want to believe this, right? 
lose it, lose it. You want to be good at this, you got to lose it, right? We're not protesters. We're not. We're people who reason for a living. That doesn't mean we don't share the views or we don't share the views, but that those views should never interfere with the clinical process of reasoning. It's just like Amazon delivering all these things to my house. Like, stop. <laughs> um, so I think we discussed last week in understanding what an inference is, right? This thing rings, and therefore it's a fact that we've heard a sound. Uh, I see Vicki Gormanley's name on this, so it's a fact. I can show you now it's Vicki Gormanley's name. So nobody's disputing that. We're, you know, uh, I see a phone number, and we all agree it's a phone number. I then testify, and I link the phone number to Vicki, and then you they say you credit my testimony. You get none of those facts are in dispute. Right? However, when in response to those facts I say, hi, Vicki, you get that's an inference. Talk to me. Yeah. Because we have no evidence from the number, from the name, and from the ringing, we have no direct evidence that the voice will be Vicky's. The voice could be wherever had the phone, right? Which does not be Vicky. So what they're testing on this, te what they're doing here is, okay, we're going to give you established facts. And then the Whoever writes is going <coughs> to draw inferences. And those inferences can be strengthened. Those inferences can be weakened. Those inferences can <coughs> require certain assumptions. Those inferences may be flawed. It's, what they're testing is a process. Right. So you get the first thing is arguments are like links in the chain. You with me? And those links are inferential. They don't have to be true, but there's a degree of probability. You know, an inference that's well-reasoned, you're going to say it's 95% likely or 99% likely. An inference that's not well-developed is not at all likely. They're both inferences. Is it further fair to say that when you construct, when you're reasoning, is it fair to say you don't know what you don't know? Yes. Yeah. So you want to be aware of that, or you don't want to be aware of that? Yeah. So I'm going to prosecute a case, and and uh, uh, if I have a, uh, a a one witness identification uh, at three o'clock in the morning on a, in, in poor lighting conditions in Mount Vernon, uh, and I'm going to charge somebody with that crime. Uh, would it be fair to say I might not know whether or not the person being charged has an identical twin? I might not know that. Talk to me. Yes. And that if I pursue this without ever thinking about, well, what don't I know? Uh, I'm not going to be very good at this. Yes? So, so think about what you don't know. Think, you could give me any argument on the planet. You could give me any position on the planet, and we can put it up here on the board. And I, I'm quite certain by the time we were done, you would be more humble than from the time we began. Right? Because every, every, every <coughs> conclusion, right, the, oh, this doesn't matter. Once you draw the conclusion, you're saying this doesn't matter because now you have a conclusion. Well, well, you know what, Chuckles, depending on how that conclusion is drawn, I may have an issue with you. Can you draw a conclusion that says something is possible? Talk to me. Yeah. You get that language that something is possible leaves this an acknowledgement of if it's possible it doesn't mean it's certain. Yes? Mm -hmm. yes? Could you have a conclusion that says something is not possible but it's likely? Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Yeah. But doesn't that increase your burden of proof? If you're going to say something is likely, don't you have a higher burden of persuasion than if you're saying something is possible? Talk to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can say it's possible that every planet you'll never see is purple. Isn't that possible? Talk to me. Yeah. And that's what you got to get. It is possible. I mean, it's ludicrous, but it's possible. Yes? yes? But if I then said, no, 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 I think it's likely, 
that every planet you'll never see is purple, then you know, you'd all be saying, what's he doing in front of the room? Which you may be saying anyway. But think about your language, right? And think about what you're committing yourself to. Because once you get um, the fever, right? The fever, right? I have the fever, right? I just, I know I'm right. I just know I'm right. And you are, you are, you are, you are scum, you know, because you don't agree with me. You're just, you're just retrofate, reprobate. That's the fever. Well, I, I, I've left all this. I don't need this because I have religion. I don't need religion in the good way. So, <clears throat> think about what the writer is doing. The writer is going to, if, if you have a conclusion that something is possible, this can be, can be very forgiving on your reasoning. If you have a conclusion that something is probable, well, not so, now you still can be forgiving, right? Because if it's probable, aren't you conceding it may not be the case? Right. Right? How about if you say it's really, 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 really likely? I mean, that sounds more than probable, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But do you get the uh, the more authoritative you you set your conclusion out as, the greater the weight of evidence that has to be there for it. So if you go out in the regular world, you're never going to hear that. You're going to hear people who will say. Uh, Fossil fuels are responsible for global warming. Do you get that conclusion? Fossil fuels are responsible for global warming. That's going to require a lot of supporting evidence. Talk to me. Yes. Right? Because could you have said it appears to be the case that fossil fuels are responsible for global warming? Could you have said that? Yes. Then that's still easier to defend. Yes. So, but you've got to be careful. I'm saying if you just stopped, because you'd have no reason to be aware of this unless you're in this business, right? Um, so you're going to stop now and say, well, wait a minute, I don't know what I don't know. Right? And again, in this world, there's somebody on the other side. Right? So whatever case, so if I'm going to take a case, <coughs> and assert a claim, you get, I'm fully aware, at least to some degree, of facts that are contrary to the conclusion that I'm holding. You guys get it, talk to me. Yes. So you don't get to stick your head, you know, I'm not surrounded by people who agree with me. I'm gonna be surrounded by people who don't agree with me. Right? And, and again, if I'm representing my client and you're representing your client, you're coming at this from opposite ways. Right? Well, the facts are the facts, but this is process. So reasoning is everything. It's it's everything. If you reason well, yeah. If I reason well, why do I need to tell you my conclusion? Like if I reason well, don't you think you're going to adopt my conclusion without me ever telling you what my conclusion was? Talk to me. Come on. It probably lead you that way. Well, but but if the reasoning, if the reasoning is is uh, <coughs> rigorous, and, and it's, not, it's, not, it's not a it's not a bait and switch. It's not you know we're not trying to. Uh, to it, it would it be fair to say I have a view on this test and how it proceeds, mm -hmm. right? And and so I've reached a conclusion about this test. Could I be wrong? Yeah. Yes. Of course I can be wrong, Peter. I mean, again, everybody, you know, I, I, I could just get Vicky on the phone. <coughs> Vicky, I'm asking them if I could be wrong. Should be happy. Uh, so we're not here to try to be perfect. We're not here because we know all the answers. We're not. We're here because we understand this process and we make fewer mistakes and fewer fatal mistakes. Because we're aware of it. So, yeah. The psychometric thing, right? It's critical. So based on what we discussed last week would be fair to say you have plenty of time. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't have enough time on the test? Who doesn't have enough time? Uh, yeah, well, but would it be fair to say if you've persuaded yourself there's not enough time on the test, you persuaded yourself, right? What is there not enough of on the test? 
fine. Kabish? But again, can you can you view this as well? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, that, you know that schmuck next to me got 35 minutes. I, I got 35 minutes. Uh, the person behind me's got 35 minutes. The person in front of me's got 35 minutes. The person in my right's got 35 minutes. They don't have enough time because they persuaded themselves. They don't have enough time. I have plenty of time. I have a plan. Do you get? A lot of this is your psychology, right? And then walking the walk. Uh, pressure. Again, you want to be lawyers, right? Is anybody making you be a lawyer? No. no. And does anybody have any? Does anybody imagine you'll be a lawyer and not experience stress? <laughs> I, I, you know, but but think about it. it's your life, right? So okay, so then you say, well, no, 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 no. I know I'm going to experience stress, and they give you a test that's stressful, and you say, I can't. Okay. Bombs away. So, in my world, again, preparation is the antidote to anxiety. Preparation is, you're, you're now in a state of mind that the person next to you is not. Right? Because you're not going in there until you're prepared. And that stinks, because you may not be going in there when you want to go in there. But, you know, you may get to April, and I may be saying to you, the evidence is not consistent with your conclusion. And that's all this is. You just look at this and say, okay, is this consistent with that? If it's not, then you don't do it because you're a lawyer, right? If it is, then you do it, and you have confidence because you're only doing it because you're prepared, not because you want to do it or you don't want to do it. So, First thing is the flawed argument. The language they use, uh, you're, there's no change. So you're, you're in the logical reasoning section, and the writer has embedded the flaw. Now, the writer has to telescope to the reader, I've embedded the flaw. So either you're going to see one of four words, the word flaw, the word error, the word vulnerable, or the word questionable. One of those four must be there. There are no exceptions. Flaw, error, questionable, or vulnerable. That word has to be, a, one of those words, one of those four, has to be accompanied by the word reasoning or the word argument, which is telling me I have this. Every time you have that, the writer has created a situation, right? This is just like, okay, I know I'm looking for an offer, right? Now I'm going to read. Again, these words are interchangeable. The word example, the word hypothetical. Those two words are interchangeable. The way we proceed, and I, I do think it makes law school really, um, I think it helps a lot, that you learn from examples that you're not learning from complicated philosophical texts or something. You're, you're learning from, like this is what happened in somebody's life. Um, so, to, I can put a flaw anywhere in here. I can do, you know, uh, think about flaws as, uh, Would we, so, so we agree or from, that knowing the difference between correlation and causation might be helpful in several areas of law, not the least of which would be torts, right? In other words, the correlation is that two things seem to happen at, or in a related way, maybe at the same time, or uh, maybe certain conduct, right, at a certain outcome, so you see you see people smoke, uh, maybe smoke a lot, and you do a study, and so you do the study with people who really smoke a lot, and you follow the study for 30 years, and don't you think at the end of the 30 years, that group will have a higher incidence of perhaps lung disease than the group that did no smoking at all? Talk to me. Yes. <clears throat> 
does that mean that a person who smoked, was in that group that smoked a lot, and was diagnosed with lung cancer 30 years later, does that mean that the smoking was the cause of the lung cancer? No. No. You can't get that, right? Well, it's just going to be on your test. That's tort law. Right? So the principle is this. When you're talking about groups, you're not talking about individuals. So when you're talking about events that are related and noticeable outcomes, when you, you see, no, 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 I, I, I see, I see, uh, I see the connection between an increase in risk. Would there be an? Would it be fair to say that there's an increase in risk if we accept that hypothetical that you're smoking for 30 years? We establish after the 30 years that a, a much higher percent of folks in that group developed lung cancer than folks who didn't smoke at all. Would we agree that the conduct now has a risk factor associated with it? Yes. But that's not predictive, right? That just means it's a it means you probably shouldn't do that if you don't want to. Uh, take that risk 30 years down the road, right? But it doesn't predict any individual. Okay, so that's going to be on your test. Well, all they're doing is, but you say, wait a minute. So I'm now looking for a situation, right, where I'm reading about groups and stuff, but the conclusion is predicting the outcome for a member of the group. Okay. No. So correlation causation is going to be on your test. How about, if I want to test you on a different thing, so that that concept is correlation causation. But what if I want to test you on your, whether or not you understand uh, the difference between, uh, if I give you something, if I want to, if I want to see if you really understand the reasoning stuff, uh, how about, do you think it could be a flaw that people reject arguments without considering the reasoning of those arguments? If we talk about a principle, have you ever been inclined to reject a person's conclusion without examining their reasoning? Yes. Well, <clears throat> if it's somebody, remember, we're, we're talking about flawed reasoning here. Have you ever met someone who will not consider the reasoning, perhaps because of whoever wrote what you're reading? Yes. Right, so maybe somebody in psychology is reading something of some theory of Freud's, and a person has, over time, really become uh, not at all fond of Freud's theories, but haven't, hasn't read this one. Do you think that person might pick this up and dismiss it before they consider it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, in the world of flaws, it's heavily tested. Um, one, we don't care who the messenger is. Now, that's, that that will be a low level of difficulty. It's really basic, right? But simply because somebody has an interest in the outcome, right? So, the. Uh, the mayor is going to personally benefit through his family's businesses if there's redevelopment of Times Square, right? And there's a proposal to redevelop Times Square. Does that mean we should oppose the proposal? No. no. What should we do with the proposal? How about read it? Talk to me. It's just, to me, it's just attitudinal. It's just none of the stuff that used to matter matters anymore, right? So, am, am I going to be oblivious to the fact that a person has an interest in the outcome? No, I'm not going to be oblivious to it. But, but I'm going to read it. Um, how about, if, if 